Hello and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial video and in this video I want to show you how you can count those rows that are not present in another table. One of the very common scenario when you are working in a table on a business requirement that you can count and filter all of the rows which is in one table but whenever you know a new table is introduced the complexity increases and you want uh, basically want to count those rows that are not present in another table and I'll show you the example before that just a quick information that this is a Google sheet and the link is present in description in this Google sheet I keep all of my tutorial video as you can see the title of these videos over here so that you can come over here easily search and jump on to that particular video present in column P so I maintain this sheet. make sure you use it for any uh, requirement that you have or any of the previous videos for dynamic measure dashboards new KPI card visual all of that and I'll keep publishing my links over here so that you don't have to uh, you know you can get the most out of it also the exercises related videos is something which is present over here uh, which you can use it uh, if you want to follow along with the exercises okay with that information let me go to the power bi all right so here I am in the power bi and if you see I have this one table in which certain projects are going on like P01, 02, 03, 04, 05 and then you have a list of only the active projects. Let's say this is the big list, whole list, active, inactive or hold or whatever but this shows only the active projects and we want to know what are those projects which is present in this list and not present in this list. For example, in this case P03 and P05 is basically the project which is not present in this list. So it's a very common use case. You may uh, have either encountered it, that's why you are here or you know even for the learning perspective this can be an interview question. So how you can resolve that? Well here you will need to use a quick count rows function with another function called accept. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I will say row count is equals to and first of all, OK, this is creating it over here. Fine, not an issue because I'm anyway creating a measure. So count rows. OK, in count rows, it's simply what it does. It gives you the count. So what do we need? We need to supply a table. So the way we need to supply a table is by using the accept function. So what it accept does takes left table and right table return the rows of the left side table which do not appear in right side table right left side table right side table returns the rows of the left side table that do not appear in the right side table so you got the idea right so you will get what uh, sheet one so in this case sheet one but we want to be specific to project number now the name is not coming so what do you do you basically then use values function and then use sheet one project number comma um, yeah values is close right yes and values sheet two active project close this close accept close count rows okay and let's hit enter so that is what it is going on in a scenario like this where you use a table function along with the count rows function to get an output like this okay now if i create a kpi card and i click on row count what it gives me two p03 p05 right so this can this is a very uh, straightforward scenario with a small data set i thought uh, thought of giving it give it to you so that you can implement it wherever in thousands or millions of rows you have and you have to do that quick counting of values you know appearing in one table but not appearing in another table which common requirement right so whether you want to count entire row then you don't have to supply the name like uh, over here I have supplied the project number because I wanted to do a specific count based on a specific uh, column but if you want to do it on an entire table then you just supply the sheet one sheet two and no need to supply the values in that case it will check all rows and give you the count the only thing to take care is that you when you do that it is a very very uh, you know process intensive or a, uh, it will take a lot of resources because you can see it has to scan each row compare with another row table uh, and we're from another row scan that and then return you the output true false true false or give you the number in when we are doing the count rows so Make sure you um, 
you uh, use it when it is absolutely required or what i really recommend is maybe you create a flag in the back end where you know a comparison is already been done and uh, you are just have to do the simply account of over here but if you absolutely have to do it inside in the power bi then this is what the process is which is intensive a uh, process uh, the the resource intensive but you can still get the output so that's the word of caution but feel free to use this and i'll meet you in the next video with a new topic